step back and uh, enjoy some time for relaxation as you step down and uh, retire from coaching after 37 years helping some JV teams at Martinsburg. It is. It's it's bittersweet and, and emotional to make that final decision, but I, I think it's when you get to the point in your career uh, and you're all in and you, you do something and you try to give 110% and, and love what you're doing with passion, and, and I just love the game of basketball and just been a – has been a part of basketball at Marshburg High School and the basketball family for, again, 30-plus years. And it's been so uh, – I've just been so blessed and so fortunate and uh, so thankful for so many people that helped me along the way. And it, it has been a great run, but it is time to step back and, and enjoy life a little bit. And uh, it, it's just that decision time to make, and I've done so. And it, it's been bitterly sweet, emotional time to do so, but, but it, I feel like it is that time. Coach, you spent 37 years with the program. Um can you talk us through, I guess, what led to you starting your, your career at Martinsburg and what's it been like to coach with uh, Coach Rogers for as long as you guys have coached together? Certainly. Well, if I may, with that said, Colin and Spencer and, and Nick, my original boss, my original CEO and, and, and ex-teammate from Glenville State College, I have to give so much thanks and appreciation to Don Bullitt. Don Bullitt and I played college basketball together at Glenville State back in the late 70s and early 80s. and became good teammates and always became very, very good friends. And, and he calls me up after we both graduate from Glenville. We, we were now looking to start a, a J-O-B. It's time to start living and, and, and making a career of what you want to do. And he calls me up one afternoon, and I'm originally from Parkersburg, West Virginia. And he says, uh, Coach Moore, you know, we're looking for some coaches up here in the eastern panhandle of Martinsburg, West Virginia. And I said, you know, I said, Donnie, I had, Coach Bullitt, I have no idea. Give me a, a general idea of where Martinsburg, West Virginia is located. He said, Coach, just, you know, get in your car and, and, and start heading towards Washington, D.C. And I, I said, no, that's fine. I, I have no problem with that. I'm ready to start something different and start a new chapter in my life, start a career, if you will, and, and who better else to do it with, 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 with other than Don Bullock? So I jumped in my 1971 VW Volkswagen Bug, started heading up the interstate, and uh, as I'm driving probably four or five hours up towards the eastern panhandle, I guess I actually bypassed the state of West Virginia and start heading into D.C. As I'm getting closer to Washington, D.C., I'm thinking to myself, I better stop and, and get off the bean path for a moment and call Don Bullitt to make sure that I'm getting fairly close uh, to the eastern panhandle, not knowing exactly where it's located. Not heard of Martinsburg, West Virginia, uh, for the most part. So I stop and, and, and make a phone call and said, Coach Bullitt, I'm, I'm, I'm getting close to Washington, D.C. How, how much closer I am you know, to get to Martinsburg? He says, well, Coach Moore, I think you've gone maybe just a little bit out of your range and a little bit further than you need to. <laughs> make, make a U-turn and come on back down uh, south, southwest on Interstate 70, and that will eventually run you into, into Martinsburg, West Virginia. So he was the first person as a great friend and a, and a great basketball player, someone that got me kick-started my career at Martinsburg High School, and then that was with the girls' basketball program back in probably 86, 87. And then, of course, you know, Don, uh, Dave Rogers uh, uh, invited me to be part of the boys' basketball coaching staff in probably 89 or 90, and uh, just, just so grateful and so appreciative of, of both Coach Bullitt and Dave Rogers giving me the opportunity and my family the opportunity to be part of the basketball family at Marsburg High School for some 30-plus for some years. Uh, so I'm eternally grateful and appreciative of those two guys and so many other people that I could probably uh, call out here shortly, but, but uh, those two guys are just so appreciative and grateful of giving me the opportunity to do something that I love to do, and that's be around young people and, and teaching and coaching basketball. Uh, so that's kind of where it got started back in probably in the fall of 86, 87. And, and that's where the story began. And now the uh, story's coming to an end after 37 years. And you mentioned earlier it was an emotional decision for you, Coach Moore, to finally uh, retire. What led to the decision that now is the time to do so? Well, uh, again, I, I have, I'm one of, of, of 10 children. I'm one of a large family. I'm the youngest, if I may say. I'm the youngest of 10 children, and I have two wonderful young kids of my own, my daughter Haley and Hunter, who are now uh, making a career of themselves and doing well, if I may. And, and I have family that lives in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I have family that lives in Houston and Dallas, Texas. I have family that lives in Florida. So we're kind of spread out around the countryside. It's just time for me to, to go and, and be with family and friends, uh, those who I love, and I've not had a chance to do that so much during the winter months, kind of locked in and, and kind of honed in on my, on my profession and my job with teaching and coaching basketball. <laughs> now, that, now that I have a little bit of time to do that, 
Um, I'm looking forward just to spending time with family and friends. I have a few hobbies and interests that I enjoy doing as well, and I'll have a little bit more time to do that. So I'm kind of looking forward just to, to as you mentioned earlier in your, in your earlier comment, just relax and, and enjoy life. And Coach Moore, you know, this year uh, prior to the season, Coach Rogers had hired a former player in Marcellus Basie. I believe he coached a little bit in the early 2010s on the staff as well. But from what we've kind of seen being at games, he seemed to be on your JV coaching staff as well and helping you out when needed. Yes, just a, what, what a, a great guy and a, and a great coach and a great player in his time. As we all know, Marcellus Basie was a three-time, three-sport player and, and I, I think probably an all-star player, an all-state player in those three sports and just a great asset to our program. The energy and the effort, and the, as we tell our players to play with energy and effort and, and play with intensity, Coach Basie brings that to the table. And, and uh, again, he just like that as a player himself. And he brings that to that energy and excitement and, and the knowledge. I mean, just being a, the knowledge that he has and he brings to the table. He was very uh, helpful, when, like you just mentioned, on my sideline, kind of giving me some tips of what I could probably do to, to the X's and O's, if you will, and help me out a great deal as well on the sideline. So I'm very grateful. And Coach Basie, again, is just a, a benefit to our program. And I think, I think he and Dave Rogers and, and our assistant coaches are looking forward to certainly our future, which I think is very bright. Coach, uh, at the JV level, obviously winning is important, but it's not necessarily the only thing, uh, really at the high school level, just in general. What are some things that you hope that players took away in life lessons that you were able to uh, give them as a coach? Uh, yeah, so, and, and with that being said, that, you know, that the JV level, it's, it's that pivotal year, as I've said to Coach Rogers and others and our support staff and, and players in general, that JV level is a pivotal year in, in, in terms of, uh, you know, their basketball skills, yes, trying to hone and, and improve on their basketball skills and mold, and, and mold them into our system both offensive and defensively end of things, that's important, but it's also a little bit of a pivotal year. What I mean by that is because now they're at the age where they can perhaps start driving. So you have other components to deal with a little bit, uh, but also you know, they also to the point where they can get a job. So that, that junior year going from their sophomore to junior can be a pivotal year in what they decide to do, either you know pursue basketball and, and, and take it and, and run with it literally, and want to play at the next level. So I try to stress to them that, you know, you, you go through high school once, enjoy it, play as much sports as you can, enjoy it as much as you can, but, but you also got to buy all in and be part of something. If you want to do something and go to play at the next level, uh, you need to do that. But, but I think the, the personal things of just, just the, the relationship and the rapport that you build and you mold and you develop with their students, student athletes, those are the things that I, I really look forward to. Each year, it's a new challenge. Each team, it's a new challenge. Uh, a lot of ups and downs, but, but just trying to let the student athlete that we love you and we'll do anything we can for you. And Coach Moore will be here for you through the thick and thin. Coach Moore, 37 years is a long time. Just share with us some memories that uh, you have throughout those 37 years and some friends that you oh got my. to make along the way. How much time do we have? <laughs> uh, just, just so many great memories. I mean, in, in terms of success stories, if I may, in terms of basketball success stories, you have to stop and think about the three championship teams that we had, uh, the 1994 team that, that, that you know, I, I would think upset if you want to use that word, we kind of upset the, the number one team in DuPont High at that time. It was DuPont High School when we beat the likes of Randy Moss and Jason Williams. And I, I even think the other three starters went on to play football or basketball at the next level. So a very, very talented team in DuPont High. But, but that 94 team was, uh, was awful gritty. I mean, they were just tough as nails. And they thought as one and they played as one. They were not selfish. I, I think DuPont was more flash and cash. If you will, they want they wanted to be part of the highlight reel, as we were, we were just more of a blue collar team that just kind of grinded out on the defensive end and took advantage of all those of opportunities that game. And, and I think also, if I can recall, we out rebounded that team three to one uh, that night, and I think that was the teletape of the '94 team uh, that beat Dupont. And then and I think you got to go into the the '09 team. A great memory and another success story in our basketball program beaten. I think we beat South Charleston, if I'm not mistaken, that year in the 09 group. And then you, you move on a couple of years forward and you go in with the 2013 team that was just so talented and so gifted. I mean, we just, our bench was, was extremely deep. 
uh, you know, Dante Grantham and Joan and Zarell, and I don't have the roster in front of me, but just a great, great bunch of kids that just work their tails off every day in practice. We were talking about that just the other day. Practices with that 2013 team, it was a grind. It was competitive every day in practice, and that certainly converted from practice minutes converted into game minutes, and they were so talented and so gifted, but they worked extremely hard in practice, and, and that sometimes can be a challenge, as we know, throughout the seasons. But I think those three times were, were special moments in our success stories at Martinsburg High since I've been there, yes. Coach, uh, we just had Kelly Church and Chris Rest on not too long ago talking about their 25 years uh, coaching at Hedgesville. And there's so many coaches in this area that have been around for so long. Coach Rogers has obviously been around for 44 years. Uh, what do you think it is about the Eastern Panhandle that, I guess, attracts people to stick around once they start coaching here? Well, certainly the people that you're with, your, your coaches, your, your coaching staff, the, the, the relationships that you build in you and the rapport you have with your coaching staff and your support staff uh, and the administrators at your, at your schools, uh, and so I think first, first and foremost, and more importantly, is your student athletes. Just just the kids that's walking into hallways at, at, at your high schools, and, and, and you just, it, it's just awesome that the amount of talent in the skill area that we have in this area, it's just unbelievable. And, and I think, and getting, and, and with that mention of Dave Rogers, uh, keep in mind that he is, and most of you know this, he is the winningest high school basketball coach, to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, in, in the state of West Virginia. So I've been very fortunate and very blessed to be part of his coaching staff. I'm eternally grateful and, and, and thankful for him and, and, and the others. So many others have given me the opportunity to be around that many years of 35 plus and, and, and just the rapport and the relationship that we have built. But I, I think just the talent in the Eastern Panel is just unbelievable. And, and I think for many years, I think if I'm not mistaken, you know, we were the top dog at one time, and I think we still are. I would think that, but we still have some we go a little bit of a rebuilding phase at this moment. But but at one time, you know, Martinsburg was the elite. But there's so many high schools with with that much talent that they now have caught up, and uh, it's become what I would consider even Stevens. The balance uh, and, and the level of basketball in this area, as mentioned, is just it's just great, and, and and that's a good thing. And that's a good thing, obviously. Coach Moore, what is something from the start of your career to now that has really changed through basketball? Well, you know, just just the evolving of the game. Uh, you know, Coach Beijing, and Coach Raja, I was talking about this the other day. You know, again, if I can reflect and, and rewind the tape some 40 years ago when I played at Parsburg High School and, and through my college career at Glenville State, I'm just going to use the, the postman as an example. You know, when we played the game, the postman, your, your big guy was to stay around the rim, catch the basketball in the low post, drop step, and finish the shot at the rim. Today's game, it's evolved so much, as you well know, that I'm just, again, using the postman as an opportunity to, to express, you know, you've got to be able to do so many different things with the basketball today. You've got to be able to create and manufacture different shots off the bounce. You've got to be able to be a facilitator. You've got to be able to guard five different positions. So the game has changed so much since you and I and many others played back in the day, if you will, and and, and and I've tried to, you know, stay up with the, the evolving of the game, uh, but it, it has changed. The pace of the game has changed. I often sometimes tell our players there is no shot clock in the state of West Virginia, but we want to try to stay ahead of the defense and push the pace and get out and, and try to get some early transition baskets and kind of play in front of the defense and keep the defense on their heels. So I think I think I think the game has changed a little bit in trying to mold and, and, and stay up with the game a little bit has been a challenge throughout the years, but, but those are the challenges we as coaches love. Um, so I, th I think the, the, the style of the game has changed a little bit, and we try to adapt to that, and uh, I think we've done a pretty good job with it. Coach Moore, final question here. What is What are you going to miss the most about coaching here as you head into retirement? Oh, man, just just, just, just the players. I mean, I mean, uh, nothing taken away from our coaching staff, again, starting with Don Bullitt and Dave Rogers and so many more. And if I could just kind of give a, just a quick list of names that, that has been instrumental in my success and having the opportunity to be around coaches and work with people with, at Marsburg High School. Uh, Rodney Davis, Bruce, uh, Bruce Fowler. Uh, these are all assistants. Um, Butch Custer, one of our support staff members who's been with Dave Rogers since probably 1975, 76. Um, 
Coach Daryl Smith, Coach Daryl Young, Chris Berg, and so many others. I'm probably leaving others out, but just so many staff members. But they would all agree with, with me, I think, that it's about the, the relationship with your students, student athletes, to see them succeed at the high school level and go on, hopefully go on and, and, and help them enter the college level of state or a, a university in your state or around the countryside to, to see them do that. And those are the success stories that I'm going to miss. I'm going to miss the locker room. You know, I, I told the kid the other day after we went up to Petersburg tournament and ended up winning, got beat in the first round, but ended up playing the uh, in the consolation round that, you know, the life for me, the road ahead of me is shorter than the, than the road behind me. You have all your life to live and, and, and enjoy high school basketball and enjoy wild west. Cause it, it, you only go through it once. And, uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to miss it. I, I love, I love all my kids over the years. And if there's anything that I can ever do as, as a, as a part of our coaching staff at Marshburg High for you and your family, coach Moore will be here for you. I'm just going to miss the rapport and the relationship with our students, student athletes, and certainly our coaching staff. Um, All right, coach. Thanks for the time and best of luck in retirement. Have have a enjoy well, life. Well, thank you. And, and, hey, and the TV ten, I mean the TV ten and WRNR. Thank you for what you're doing with with the the EPAC and bringing bringing live sports into the houses, into the homes of. Uh, of the Quad State region. And, and thank you all for what you do for our student athletes as well. Thank you very much. 